Hi, everybody. My name is George Grant. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my website, vocaltoning.net. I'm with Lisa Marie Kincaid. Hi, Lisa. Hello. We've never met each other in person. Everything we do for five years is online and it works. And it's like I know Lisa really well. So anyway, <laughs> what do I do today? I am going to introduce this series. We're going to call it Drum Talk Vocable Rhythm Training. And so there'll be a series of lots of little stories about how this drum talk method applies to lots of different settings with different ages, different people, different needs. And so the first thing we need to understand is what are these vocables, drum talk vocable rhythm training? Well, the idea is that we say sounds. This is an ancient practice, many cultures. Dom, tucka tucka ga, get dom is the language that we use. India would have its own, Africa would have its own. And we do these things so that we can get to this point of playing what we say. Dom, ga, get, ga, get, dom. The vocables don't mean anything. They're just, they sound like drums usually, and they're easy to combine in your mouth. And so I developed this drum talk method based on my background in world music and jazz. But I, I'm not doing African or music from India or any other place. I designed this unique method because I was teaching classes at the University of Utah, Utah State University, and all throughout the schools of Utah and Idaho as an artist in residence. And so what am I doing? I'm teaching improvisation. Now, this is a controversial word among music educators. The word improvisation is scary. Well, maybe we better address it. Little kids, improvisation isn't scary. Adult music performers, improvisation is scary. So what are we going to do? We're going to solve the problem. We start out simple. Gagget dome. Tucka tucka dome. We're going to do this in a minute so you can see how it goes. But, you know, I'm doing this improvisation for non-music majors, some of them. And so it's for mindfulness, stress reduction, learning to communicate with each other, learning to be confident as an adult to get over this fear of, of, oh, ga, ga, e, ah. I mean, little kids do this easily. And for little kids that can do this easily, they need to learn focus, discipline, teamwork, and these other kind of values. So anyway, um, my current clients are all online. I, I do everything at home long before the pandemic. And I'm mostly offering people mindfulness, stress reduction, downright health benefits. Now, Lisa, she teaches all ages and all abilities. She teaches marimba. She teaches everything. The drum set, the timpani, the marching band, world music. She and I study frame drums together. So she's a, like this complete percussionist, and she teaches young kids the sight reading and the performance skills that they're going to need to get up an ensemble and do that. So Lisa brings something unique to drum talk. And um, so Lisa, tell us a little bit how this plugs into you and your clients. Hi, George. Thanks for having me here today. Yeah, so I am here just as a testament to drum talk and how amazing it is and that it really does work. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I was working in an elementary school uh, just as a regular music teacher, and I brought drum talk to the kids, and it was amazing how quickly they started to pick up with rhythm, but then from there, I was able to teach life skills such as focus, discipline, self-control, and emotional regulation. So even though I do work with all instruments and children of all ages, including adults, the reason drum talk works is because you say what you're then going to play and then we attach it to the reading skills. So three key components there, say it, play it, and read it. 
So George, let's give them a little taste of our magic. Okay, now, the see, that's the difference. Lisa's teaching these kids to sight read music and we learn rhythm. It's called rhythm accuracy. But in where my people, mostly adults now, I don't work out in the schools as much, they don't necessarily play their instruments. So it's important to understand that this drum talk language becomes something more than just these silly syllables. It be So what we're going to focus on right now is showing you how this play what you say really works. So we sometimes start out with these empty grids and we fill them in with these drum talk words. So I'm going to put one in here and I'm going to say it's dome. Let me use a Sharpie so it can be seen. And Lisa, you pick a word for me. Any word you like. Dome, God, get tucka tucka chicka chicka, ooh, oh, ah, e, e, or mm. This is the 10 chords we start out with. Chicka chicka. Okay. Now we can write on computers and everything, but for the sake of ease right now, we're doing it on a piece of paper. Now I can fill this blank in. I can just, any combination works. Okay. Lisa doesn't even know what I'm writing here, but she'll be able to read it. Now read that top line for me, Lisa. It's like going to get your eyes checked, right? It is. So what do you Gog see? It, dome, gog it, ah, gog it, chicka chicka dome. Okay. Now we can write and read. And then later, maybe what I'll do is I don't even have to explain this to little tiny kids. They're maybe in the third grade. I don't have to explain anything to them. And when the time is right, I put traditional notation up on the board and I say, who can read this? And they all put their hand up and they want to read it. I never, nobody ever wanted to do this sight reading. Sight reading is hard. It's very tricky. And now that third line, Lisa, you didn't know what I was going to do. You're going to sight read that with the drum talk language. So what is that? Dome, gog it, taka taka dome. So in this way, the drum talk gets us loose and confident and we can speak up and and be inventive and improvise and but we can also learn to sight read now i have this chart now george if yeah. you hold that up again for just a moment let me show you how that applies to music ed if george will hold up that that piece of paper again i'm going to first say the third line with drum talk language and then that third line i'm going to say it in traditional counting using the eastman method so in drum talk, we would say that dome, gog it, taka taka dome. But in traditional Eastman counting, which is what most musicians know, one, two, and three, and a four. Right. And the difference between the numbers and the syllables is that a completely different brain function is being used. Like, okay, if I'm Bobby McFerrin and I could go one, two, and three, and a four, and, and he could do all this, but he'd be having a lot more fun, and so would we, if he just goes, because our math brain really doesn't care about the music. <laughs> math is an, an analytical tool that is helpful, especially when we're solving problems, but the math brain is, you have to feel music, I'm sorry. You know, we have to get to that point. Now, I've got a cheat sheet to lead Lisa in Echo After Four. She doesn't know. This is the oral tradition. Okay, so Echo After Four, Lisa. Echo After Four. Ooh, dome, ga, get, ah. Ooh, dome, ga, get, ah. I've got a cheat sheet. She doesn't. Ga, get, chicka, chicka, dome, mm. Ga, get, chicka, chicka, ooh, oh. Now, this is where adults who are professional musicians, maybe music therapists, and they're, they're scared, they're nervous about doing something that sounds so silly to them. It's not going to their clients, but they're nervous. And so this is used as an icebreaker. And then eventually they don't need the cheat sheet anymore. And they can draw right upon their 
experience. And these words get much more sophisticated. We add all kinds of syllables and we've got finger counting. We've got all kinds of ways to make this go. It can become something and then we go right off the page. We don't even know what we're going to do. So it starts simple and kind of, you know, rudimentary, but then it goes right up to basically jazz improvisation. And mm -hmm. so there's lots of applications. Now, let's show them how we do this with the drum, Lisa. Absolutely. So if I go echo after four, she's going to say it. Echo after four. So she knows what we're going to do now. We've got dozens of these drills. And then I'm going to qualify it. Play what you say. Play what you say. Dome, got get, got get, dome. Dome. So this is how it works. And this, there's lots of different usages and applications. So we can see drum talk is not about drumming. Drum talk is not about drumming. It might be, but it might be about the piano. It might be about violin. Maybe you're just in a choir and you're just going to sing and you want to learn to express without being so attached to the composition for a minute. Yes, absolutely. And so one of the things that I learned when I was studying percussion at Ohio University is that there is a different language associated with different types of percussion instruments. So if you're playing tabla, there's a type of language that you use for that. Or if you're playing the djembe, which is African, you're going to be using um, some African dialect or Latin American. There's specific dialects for all of these different types of world music. And the beautiful thing about drum talk is that it works on all of these instruments, every single one of them, and it gets the same point across. So George, since you're the creator of drum talk, why don't you tell us a little bit about the origin of it? Yeah, great. I studied the music of North India and tabla drums, and you have to say it. There's no written music. It, you could write it down, but it's just all these letters. And it sounds like da din din da da tirikita takatuna kata gadagina dagadina da. And and you each of those sounds is a specific not just the, the stroke, but the the kind of stroke. It's very specific to that instrument. Like Lisa just said. Djembe, different drum, different grooves, a whole different language. South America, Middle East, dozens of these languages. So I'm suddenly in this position where people are wanting this. In the, in the 80s, it started to happen. And I, some of my students were asking, well, you know, I want to learn about this. And so we started to, to create this. And I wanted to create a language that was American. And I don't, I'm not going to represent Africa or India or Middle East. I'm a jazz musician. I create with other people right on the spot. Jazz musicians, dancers, theater, even poetry people. And we, we don't have any script. We're going to just figure it out right now. And we've got 30 minutes to talk about it. And then we're opening. We're doing it right there. So, well, drum talk. I wanted a downbeat. And I wanted two eighth notes, and I wanted four sixteenth notes. I wanted a quarter note rest. And then I wanted none of these to be, you know, from any other tradition. And then I added the five pure vowel sounds. Not A-E-I-O-U, but U O A E. -E. And this is what vocal teachers work with their people to get nice, you know, instead of the trumpet or the violin, vocalists are using vowel sounds. We really want to get the colors right. So We've got kindergartners who are doing this because they learn to shape their mouth. We do it without sound and they'll imitate. It's really cute to watch them. And so basically the other thing that drum talk is unique, world music is pretty much memorizing the traditional compositions. Now these great players, they improvise, but to learn it, you do not improvise in front of your teacher who's revered as a, like a priest or something. There or a military general, you you follow the traditional instruction, and this is memorized by chanting it. 
then you play it. Then you learn variations. Then you learn more and more and more and more and more. It's liturgical. You, you memorize what everybody else has done before you. Well, my heroes are like Miles Davis and Jack DeJunet and, you know, Bobby McFerrin. They have no idea what they're going to do. They really don't. And I have no clue what I'm going to do half the time I'm playing with people. And I love that. And that's, that's what I have found a niche to teach people. So anyway, Lisa, I hope that wasn't too long-winded. <laughs> that's sort of the- No, and I think, it's, I think it's a great application, George, because everybody talks about music being the universal language. Here's the thing is that in traditional music classes, what is focused on is the reading of the language. We all teach kids the alphabet. We teach them how to read, but we also teach them to read out loud and what do kids do first? They speak. They speak first and then they learn to read. So that's what we're doing with drum talk. The grids, that's the reading part, but the majority of drum talk is teaching people how to just communicate in a musical language and just to do it off the top of your head. Conversational listening. Absolutely. I based, my whole thing is if you listen to your people in a group situation or just two people, if you listen, all your responses will be fine, mm -hmm. even if they're imperfect. So Lisa, please tell us some of these outlines of some of these special people and unique situations that we'll be talking about with your clients over the next weeks and months as we do this series, please. Absolutely. So I've worked with all ages and abilities, cradle to grave. Yes, I've been in the room when people have passed. Me too. And so I use drum talk in so many scenarios from a music education, a music therapy standpoint, starting with neurodiversity, such as autism, ADD, ADHD, and learning disabilities. From there, I've also used it in memory care with older adults working on music and memory but also with movement to help keep their bodies physically strong as well. And then another big one is articulation and pronunciation with young children. And this is something that I did pre-pandemic, but now that all of the children have gone for well over a year, um, really 18 months of school now with having the mask, you can see that you simply have trouble seeing what I'm saying when you have that mask there. And I'm sure we've all experienced this, but now the kids are having some, some trouble. So we're able to use drum talk to bring that right back really quickly. And finally, the way that we use it the most is mindfulness. George and I both practice mindfulness using drum talk, and therefore we're able to bring our experience to you. Awesome. Yes, this mindfulness in these music improvisation settings, you want to talk about being in the now. I mean, it's like a game. It's like, who's going to throw you the ball? And you have to be alert. You're right in the now. It's great. And you have to be very conscious and you have to breathe. It's all great. What can be better breathing than this using your voice to chant, you know, longer phrases and all these vowel sounds. And so to review, you know, we start with the simple stuff. It starts really simple. Little tiny people can do this. Then it becomes more sophisticated. We actually have maybe even four sections of a choir chanting different patterns in sequence with each other. And this includes melody and harmony. We can edit these things and they can be multi pages long. We can create our own compositions. Somebody's creating a groove while somebody else is freestyling, uh, improvising over the top of it. And it's important to know, you can see this at my website store. I've got a lot of manuals and we've written down, typed out lots of patterns and it's a progression like book one, two, three, four, and so forth. And so, but then the most important thing to remember, why do we learn English or French or Spanish? To speak, right? To just let go and have fun. It's, we don't have to stay attached to the exercises forever. Maybe j to end, um, let's just jam, Lisa. And that sounds, that sounds great. We'll, we'll do what we call trade eights. Now, when I do this with people, sometimes it turns into a nine or a seven because they might not have eights down. Who cares? 
They're having fun. They're breathing. They're getting away from their computer. You know, it's great to just use music for a better life. So here we go. I love it. Okay, Lisa, thank you for your help today and for my pleasure. What we're going to this cool project we're going to do together. So everybody, please subscribe so that you'll keep in touch with us and please see the show more button under the video if you want to get in touch with me or with Lisa and visit my website store to learn more about these manuals. And we'll see you, Lisa Marie, later. And we'll see everybody Sounds good. next time. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you.